Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the regular meeting of the La Crosse Common Council here on Thursday, October 10th. I note that uh, all council members are present and accounted for here this evening. Uh, I would just make a, a special note uh, uh, for all of us here in the city of La Crosse, uh, sending our prayers and best wishes to former council president Dick Swans. Uh, Dick is uh, at Bethany St. Joe's in room 715 if you want to uh, visit him or send him your best wishes. So. I know that we do that all on, on behalf of our organization here. Uh, so uh, for those who are able, please join me in standing for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by our invocation, and tonight's invocation is from Pastor Kurt Blair from the La Crosse Community Church of the Nazarene. Let's pray. Father, tonight we begin by saying thank you for life. Thank you for your grace that abounds in so many different fashions and ways. But tonight, Lord, we think of the council members and the, their families, and we pray that you would bless, encourage, strengthen, guide them, and Lord, for the issues that they will be dealing with tonight, may there be wisdom that would be given, that there might be resolutions, there might be uh, avenues to find what you would have for each one. And so, Lord, we pray that you would help Mayor Cabot. I pray that you would lead him, use him. And Father, tonight, as, as this council meets together, I pray that you would help them, encourage them. But Father, help them to see what is best, not just for what they want, but Lord, for what you would have for the, this community, because decisions will be made that will impact hearts and lives. Thank you, Lord. We ask that your will would be accomplished right now. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. We move on to our first item of business, which is the approval of minutes from the September 12th regular and September 18th special meetings. I see a motion has been made by Councilmember Richmond, seconded by Councilmember Menninger to approve any discussion on the minutes from our last meetings. I see there are no requests to speak up on the board, so please go ahead and cast your vote. Motion carries 13 to zero. The minutes are approved. We move on to reports. First one up is 19-1458, a report of the Fire Department Division of Fire Prevention and Building Safety on inspections and permit revenue for the month of September 2019. Motion has been made by Councilmember Richmond, seconded by Councilmember Podeski to receive and file any discussion on the monthly inspection report. I see no request to speak. Please go ahead and cast your vote. The vote is 13 to zero, the motion passes and that report is received and filed. Next up is 19-1516, report of the Director of Finance for the month of September 2019. Motion has been made by Councilmember Richmond, seconded by Councilmember Podeski to receive and file any discussion. I see no request to speak. Please go ahead and cast your vote. The vote is unanimous, that motion carries, that report is received and filed. Uh, next we move on to items under notices and discussion. Does anyone have an item they'd like to share? And if they do, please hit your request to speak and I will recognize you. Uh, first up is Council Member Olson. 
Thank you, Mayor. Um, just another reminder, we have our canine fundraiser coming up uh, this uh, uh, not not this Saturday, but the Saturday after on October 19th from 11 o'clock to 7 p.m. at the American Legion. Uh, you get a full meatball dinner for $10, and all of the proceeds go to our wonderful La Crosse Police Canine Unit. And there's other things such as a bake sale and a silent auction of hundreds of gifts donated from the community to help raise money for the dogs. So um, please consider joining us after the mayor's conference. Uh, we also do takeout orders. So if you can't stay with us and enjoy community together, you can certainly pick up a meal to go over for the whole family. Um, last two years, we raised $5,000 each year. And so we're hoping to maybe hit six or even 7,000. We're certainly ordering more meals because we sold out last year. So very popular, very fun event. And I hope all you can come bye-bye thank you anyone else have an item to share <laughs> are there any others go on once go on twice go on three times okay uh, let's move on then to our common council matters first up is item 19-1515 which is a resolution approving the October 2019 engineering estimates motion has been made by councilmember Weaver seconded by councilmember Christians to adopt any discussion? I see no request to speak on the board. Please go ahead and cast your vote. Motion uh, passes by a vote of 13 to 0. That item is adopted. Uh, next, we move on to item 19 1517, a resolution approving the 2019 bills paid in October of 2019. Motion has been made by Councilmember Ostrom, seconded by Councilmember Richmond to adopt, and I would recognize Councilmember Richmond to speak. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I have a question on the bills uh, paid um, on the um, activity sheet that uh, you had passed out, um, Valerie. It says, post office letter of interest and when I looked at the bills paid I thought it said 25,000 but is that a accurate number because it's listed at 35,000 so I just want to double check that and we probably can approve it but I think you should maybe I'll, I'll try to address that. So the, the $25,000 is actually the initial uh, fee that the post office requires, and then if we decide to go to that next step, that's where that, that $10,000 would come after that. We actually haven't paid that extra ten yet. I don't believe so, no. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So we do have a motion and a second on the floor to adopt. Any other discussion? Seeing no other requests to speak, please go ahead and cast your vote. The vote is 13 to 0 in favor. The motion passes. We move on to, uh, to the next item, which is appointments by the mayor, item 19-1518, to the Aviation Board, Jeff Robel, Larry Lebecki, to the La Crosse County Visitor and Convention Bureau, Matt Boschka and Lori Paff, and to the Room Tax Commission, Wayne Delagrave. Motion has been made by Councilmember Richmond, seconded by Councilmember Mettinger, to confirm any discussion on the appointments. I see no request to speak. Please go ahead and cast your vote. The vote is 13 to 0. Those appointments are confirmed. We move on to suspension of Council Rule 8 for the following items, which does require a two-thirds vote, and those are items 19-1413, 1414, 1415, 1437, 1513, and 1520. I see a motion has been made by Council President Gall, seconded by Council Member Ostrom, to approve the suspension of the rule. Please go ahead and cast your vote. Again, this requires a two third vote. The motion passes by a vote of 13 to 0. The rule, uh, the rule for those items is suspended. Uh, we move on next to report of bids, quotes recommended to be adopted. First one is 19 1418. A report of bids and resolution awarding the contract to Haas Sons, Inc. in the amount of $131,000 for the River Valley Drive erosion repair. Motion has been made by Council Member Richmond, seconded by Council Member Ostrom to adopt. Any discussion? 
I see no request to speak on the board. Please go ahead and cast your vote. Again, the motion is to adopt. The vote is 13 to zero in favor. The motion passes that uh, bid and resolution is awarded. Uh, next, we move on to 19-1419, report of bids and resolution awarding the contract to Kish and Sons Electric, Inc. in the amount of $14,912 for the Lacrosse Center expansion electrical for arena seating. Motion has been made by Councilmember Podeski, seconded by Councilmember Neumeister to adopt. Any discussion? I see no request to speak. Please go ahead and cast your vote. The motion is to adopt. The vote is 13 to zero in favor. That bid and resolution are awarded. Uh, next, we move on to item 19-1465, report of bids and resolution awarding contract to Fowler & Hammer, Inc. in the amount of $262,000 for the La Crosse Center expansion arena concrete and handrails. Motion has been made by Council President Gall, seconded by Council Member Christians to adopt. Any discussion? I see no request to speak. Please go ahead and cast your vote. The motion is to adopt. The vote is 13 to zero in favor. That is adopted and the bid is awarded. Uh, next, we move on to 19-1466, report of bids and resolution awarding contract to Irwin Seating Company in the amount of $1,448,522 for the Lacrosse Center expansion arena seating. Motion has been made by Council President Gall, seconded by Council Member Neumeister to adopt. Any discussion? I see no request to speak. Please go ahead and cast your vote. The motion is to adopt. The vote is 13 to zero in favor. That is adopted and the bid is awarded. We move on to the next group, items with no recommendation. First up is item 19-1352, an application of Sue Butte for a conditional use permit allowing mini warehouse buildings in a heavy industrial zoning district at 2910 Enterprise Avenue. The item uh, was referred by the Finance and Personnel Committee with no recommendation, and I believe there was an item that the committee had asked staff to follow up on. I would uh, just turn it over to Jason Gilman, our Planning and Development Director, for the answer on that. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, my understanding in talking with staff today is that uh, the issue of the minor adjustment and the setback has been cleared up with the current certified survey map and a, a modification to the building size. So the issue that we were concerned with has now been rectified. Thank you. I do see there is a, a motion on the floor made by Councilmember Neumeister, seconded by Councilmember Jansen to adopt, and I would recognize Councilmember Podeski to speak. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, actually, I don't know if it matters, but that was J and A, and it says F and P. Does that do anything as far as this making just, this legal? Just correcting it. Okay. Thank you. Then the other question I did have was, um, I believe somebody on J and A had a question about taxes. That's one reason we referred it without recommendation, and that was going to be checked on. I'm just curious where we're at. Uh, we did look into that. We didn't find any evidence of uh, they, they were they were up to date on their taxes. Yeah. Any other discussion? Motion on the floor is to adopt. I see no other request to speak. Please go ahead and cast your vote. The vote is 13 to zero in favor. That motion is adopted and the application is approved. Uh, we move on next to item number 19-1437, a resolution approving acquisition of property interests at 621 Third Street North. Uh, this was referred to the Finance and Personnel Committee and Common Council on October 3rd to the October 10th meeting with no recommendation. Uh, what I'd like to do is um, first I'll recognize that we've got a motion on the floor to adopt made by Council Member Ostrom, seconded by Council Member Christians. And then I would like our staff, uh, Jason Gilman, to just provide a, a brief review of the various questions and the, the items of information that were provided in response to those questions. And then I know we did receive a, a late correspondence from the uh, sign company Lamar regarding the billboard. And after Jason is done, I would like Stefan to just bri briefly review that with us. So uh, first up, Jason, go ahead, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh I wanted to start out just by uh, 
maybe prefacing the reason that planning staff got involved in this. Um, and, and public acquisitions, of course, have been the launch pad for mil many millions of dollars of new investment in the city, including redevelopment of the Cargill grain elevators into LHI's campus, Grand River Station, and then our ongoing housing replacement uh, programs, to, to mention a few. Uh, we always look at the plans that have been adopted by the governing body to give us some idea of w where we should be focusing uh, on these types of opportunities and then we feel it's our job to bring those forward to Mayor Cabot and the Council for consideration. Uh, these offer opportunities, as you know, are often quick and then they can be gone for many, many years. And th in the case of this particular property, it hasn't been on the market for 30-some uh, years. I think the owner has had it since 1982. Uh, public investment uh, is then often needed to bridge the gap between market price of the property and gap costs for things like environmental remediation, infrastructure, regulatory streamlining, and leveraging other public resources. So the city plans that we referred to uh, that led to this uh, were the redevelopment uh, uh, opportunities indicated in the City Vision 2000 plan and then the more current City Vision 2020 plan which shows this as a redevelopment gateway site. Uh, this is also noted in the redevelopment area of the Redevelopment Authority's Riverside redevelopment area. It's a site that's included in TID 17's plan, uh, which anticipates new investment and sites ripe for redevelopment. In fact, the TID 17 plan specifically kind of reaches out and grabs this particular parcel because it was noted on these other plans as a likely redevelopment site. And then the Riverside North Charette Master Plan. Additionally, the city's comprehensive plan recognizes the importance of proactive redevelopment of brownfield and underutilized sites as a key economic development strategy that has been employed and has rewarded the cities with hundreds of millions of dollars in new investment. So the uh, potential adaptive reuse of the site and value proposition uh, is uh, the building was constructed in 1920. Uh, one floor of the building is about 4,400 square feet. Uh, it's currently valued at about $16 a square foot. Our staff looked around the immediate area just to see what values of adaptive reuse look like and we, we noticed like between La Crosse Distilling Company and the landmark by the river that those values per square foot are between $42 and $150 per square foot which easily, easily puts this site at 0.41 acres with the, the building or the potential of the site over a million dollars of value, which could be worth $30,000 a year in taxes in contrast to what the city currently gets, which by the way is only 2,500 of the 6,000 a year. That's just the city's portion, so we're only getting about $2,500 a year. Um, I wanted to just uh, uh, mention that um, we we have the opportunity opportunity to do many things with the property should we acquire it. Um, stabilization will be job number one, of course, just to make sure that you know the property doesn't deteriorate. Uh, but it could be marketed for redevelopment. It could be held and entered into lease agreements. It could be considered, you know, uh, for the site's value for transportation enhancement, and it could also be leveraged to assist area businesses in their growth because sometimes these sites can be valuable to adjacent businesses too. And then we have access, it's important to acknowledge, we have access to more gap capital than private developers do. For instance, like WEDC's programs and others specifically uh, call out local governments and nonprofits as being eligible for those funds. So we have to take the lead in trying to get that gap money involved in these types of projects. Uh, there's been a little bit of misinformation out uh, about this and I just wanted to clear that up. We, we've been told by the brokers who have done some research and represent the seller that this property was not on the market earlier this year for 143000 or so, that that was some website that had incorrect information and that was confirmed by uh, John Young of Coldwell Banker who represents the seller. The last time this building was on the market was 1982, 37 years ago. I was a junior in high school, by the way. Um, there have been rumors of city intended use for the site. The intended use is to be is yet to be established. We we don't have a, any preconceived idea, idea except for the vagaries of the plans indicating redevelopment investment. End uses can be facilitated by the planning department, which we've done many times in you know projects like buzzes, bikes, and others. 
And then there have been some comments about the lack of value given the site's size and configuration. The site is 0.47 acres. And just for contrast, the La Crosse Distilling Company project, which is valued at 1.3 million, sits on 0.21 acres. So that gives you a sense of scale. Um, and then as far as building def and site deficiencies, we are very well aware there are some deferred maintenance and you know issues that uh, are part of that leap of faith that elected bodies have to take when we do the, you know when we consider these types of things. And this is where we would look for resources. TID 17, um, and, and in fact on the on the question of debt, you know if if the city decides to acquire this. We don't necessarily have to take on debt, uh, and maybe Valerie can uh, um, comment on this too, but my understanding is that there is uh, $390,000 in TID 17 expected at the beginning of 2020. There are also uh, allocated uh, project funds that may not be expended in 2020 from TID 11 or 17 that could be allocated to this, which could remove any debt service. Um, and then that, that those projects can be you know, recovered with all of the increment flowing into TID 17, which uh, we, we have, uh, we can project, you know, given the increment that's coming in. Uh, we also have redeve redevelopment authority funds, uh, planning department contractual services funds for immediate root and routine maintenance, like snow shoveling and lawn mowing and stuff like that. And then we have Brownfield uh, Redevelopment Grant uh, Program monies through WEDC. We have Economic Development Assistant Funds through EDA. Um, the good work of Andrea Schnick, our Economic Development Planner, who made a call to WEDC to find out if this was eligible for community development and investment grants up to 250000 was met with enthusiasm from WEDC that this would be an ideal candidate for that program and then ready for reuse grants from the Wisconsin DNR. And if, if we decide to acquire this, we would obviously aggressively pursue any and all of these sources. And then specifically some of the questions that were asked, um, uh, I mentioned that the property hadn't been listed for sale since 1982. Uh, the city's interest in the property was propagated by a call from uh, Kathy Fox of Coldwell Banker who called Andrea Schnick on September 17th because she uh, remembered that this site was one of some of the, those sites that were shortlisted for the public market. That isn't necessarily where the public market would go, but it's an option. Um, and it, but I wanted to make it clear that the city doesn't have a, you know, a for sure idea. I mean, ultimately that would depend on the council's action in the future. Uh, also on the billboard, um, we looked at the question relative to whose responsibility would it be for removal of the billboard and it is indicated in the lease agreement provided by the real estate brokers that the lessee, that is Lamar, is responsible to remove the billboard and restore it should it be removed or if the lease was discontinued. And then on the wood retaining wall, um, that, that is between the two properties, it appears that it is on the property owned by Mississippi Welder Supply, but was constructed by a government employee credit union. The, set, the only setback requirements on the site are a nine foot rear yard setback, which would run along the south property line. And, it, and I uh, did put a map out on uh, Legistar for you to look at that shows a fairly minimal reduction in building area because it's, again, it's just a nine foot strip. We also did a quick look at how many parking stalls could this site support if the building itself was reused and there'd be room for 27 parking stalls. So that's quite a bit in a, you know, in a downtown district where we don't require off street parking, there's uh, quite a lot of room there. And then uh, the concrete slab demo demolition because we've got that big circular slab there. Um, we got a verbal quote from Hess Excavating uh, on, on that and they indicated it would likely be between $18,000 and $25,000 for that foundation to be removed and then approximately $50,000 for the building and foundation to be removed. Uh, we, we didn't get as much information on the utility laterals except that they're quite old. The sewer lateral I understand goes back to the 1940s or maybe that was the water lateral. Um, so they're probably due for replacement. But those are the types of uh, infrastructure things that we would try to apply for external funding. That's all I have. Thank you, Jason. Uh, Stefan, if you could uh, uh, just maybe uh, go through the, the letter. Uh, everybody received it, but I don't know if the council, because it came in late, if they had a chance to actually review it or not. Uh, 
A copy of a letter dated October 10 was forwarded to my office. The summarizing this letter in its simplest form, what it says is if you decide to purchase the property, they call it eminent domain. They believe it's your exercising eminent domain to do so. And we reviewed all the authorities that are listed in this, in this communication, as well as other authorities. This is not the law of Wisconsin. This is not eminent domain. Thank you. And then I, I would also maybe just ask Valerie to, because I know that we were looking at some uh, alternative funding uh, rather than a borrowing action, and maybe if you could just run through that, and then I'm going to open it up for, I know we've got Council Member Podesky on the board to speak and then open it up for questions. So uh, maybe just give us a, a brief update of what you found out uh, regarding the funding. Oh, okay, um, TID 17 doesn't currently have the cash, so it it's ex has expected cash in, into next year, sort of would have increment coming in. So the, the gap between that is when we looked at the state trust fund um, loan program. I did get some amortization schedules uh, today from them. One is the initial five-year loan that we talked about at the FMP meeting. The current interest rate is 3.25%. Um, the interest on that, if payments were made as scheduled, is uh, around $55,500. Um, after a discussion today with the planning department, if we took all of the available cash and in the incoming increment that we, we would have and prepaid that at the first payment date in March of 2021, if we paid off 400000 of the 600000 that would save um, it would make the total interest on that loan be 38278 so interest savings of $17,146. Um, and to bridge the gap between anticipated closing on the property and the receipt of borrowed proceeds, we would borrow the funds from the general fund. Thank you. Uh, first up, Council Member Podesky. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I guess I just had a few questions and some were answered and I was sick last Thursday, I missed the, the special meeting, so I apologize, but uh, one, one of the questions you know, I did have was about that original sale price, because that's been troubling to a lot of people, um, you know, that as far as, it, you know, if we're gonna pay that much more when we could have got it cheaper, and that was answered, I thank you for that. Um, and I believe uh, it was Council Member Olson I saw on TV who had questions about the cleanup there. Are we going to have any environmental problems? Uh, thank you, Mayor. And uh, our, our offer is contingent upon a uh, environmental phase one uh, assessment and, and to which we have 45 days after we receive that to notify the seller that uh, of any deficiencies and then they have the opportunity to cure those or we, we can decide at that point if we still want to move forward. And we also have a letter from the DNR that uh, acknowledges that there is groundwater contamination under this site, um, but there's no further information from the DNR indicating any other uh, issues on the site. That, that letter um, that was in the packet uh, um, basically says that the, the groundwater contamination is not the responsibility of the property owner because it migrated under the site and the site is uh, served by municipal water, so there isn't a concern about um, a well, you know, groundwater. All right, thank you. Then I do have a question for Mr. Maddie. Um, I, I did speak with a person of knowledge today uh, about the billboard, and um, what I'm curious about is if, if this isn't going to end up like the Canada Wood Suites, right, Mr. Maddie? Th this is something that we're not going to end up paying three quarters of a million dollars end up being sued if we remove that sign, are we? I, I'd like to make sure that that I'm very clear before I vote that we're not gonna be involved in a, a lawsuit. I can't guarantee you're not gonna be involved in a lawsuit. Lamar Advertising is a very litigious organization throughout the entire nation. So I can't predict what they're gonna do, but you need to know that. They do have numerous lawsuits elsewhere in, in other states as well too. Okay, but as far as, in your opinion, does that at least give us the permission to take that down? So if we were in a lawsuit, in your opinion, it's, I would, I guess, you know, it's, I shouldn't say in your opinion, but um, if we were to purchase this, 
Yeah, I guess I'm going to ask for your opinion. We do have the right to take down that billboard. Yes, we reviewed all the authorities today, and the law of Wisconsin is that we can take that down. The things that they represented in their letter are not the law of Wisconsin. We have the ability to take that down if you decide to do so. Okay. Um, you know, this is one of those properties I can remember being quite young, believe it or not, and when, and when uh, that whole development started down by the uh, lacrosse center and the Radisson and stuff, that a lot of people on council were blasted for taking down buildings and taxable and this and that. But um, I guess when I vote on this, I'm going to think highly about where it would we be right now without the lacrosse center and the Radisson and LHI and those buildings. So sometimes I guess we do have to accept some public criticism to do what we feel is right. So. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? I see no others. Uh, actually, go ahead, Councilmember Olson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I want to thank the staff um, for doing a lot of homework and bringing forward a lot of information and facts regarding this issue. Um, and I do apologize and take ownership of some of the information that I had found and tried to relay to a couple of other council members that turned out to be inaccurate. Um, I disdain inaccuracy and in information as much as anybody, and here I am having to admit to, to doing it myself. Um, I guess it came out of a panic from looking at Legistar and finding virtually nothing regarding this decision going into the meeting last week. And it's unfortunate because the planning department deserved all of the recognition and the honor that they were absent in, at a conference to, to go and, and engage in celebration of. And I have so much respect for Jason and Andrea and everybody who does do a lot of work. And it was just a tragic... Uh, bit of timing that this came up right when everybody was trying to get ready to leave town and the amount of work that was really important to do. I appreciate everything on Legister and I reviewed it going into the night. I just wish it would have been on there uh, several days before going into the special meeting vote last week. Um, and so when you're scrambling to try to find any information you can, as I would for anything regarding spending money of this nature on a piece of property, I treat it as though it was my own family's money and want to safeguard the taxpayers against any potential downfall or risk. And I erred on the side of going a little bit too far and assuming too much, but it was all out of good intention to protect the taxpayers. Um, now, I still am not in favor of purchasing this property. Um, I feel that the current situation with a, a, a less than ideal tenant is due to the inaccessible nature of that property. You really cannot access it without either doing, unless you're coming up south on Copeland, you either have to do a hairpin turn to come down 2nd Street, or you have to trespass across GECU's parking lot to reach it. I, I, I just figure if there was any business such as a restaurant or a florist, a coffee shop, you know, they, they, Mississippi Welder certainly could have found a higher dollar tenant if they could have. The, the, the business that's in there right now is, is that business for a reason. It's because the accessibility of that lot is horrendous. Um, I do see that it is included on some very highly conceptual plans, and, and, and those, are, those are wonderful. But as, as the way I see it, the only future for this little triangle of property is parking lot or, or some other structure, something combined with the GECU portion of that block, which has already been redeveloped. Um, I, I, I'm not saying it's not out there. It's, I just can't. I don't see it. And I can't justify spending this tremendous amount of money for what really amounts to the public good is going to be removal of that billboard. I just figure people are driving past and it's a maybe a two second improvement. By the time they get to the parking, lamp, parking ramp and they get out to go enjoy downtown, they're having to step over a homeless person to get to the elevator. I mean, I just, I can't justify this, this expenditure. Um, and for the, the very, very small good that it's going to bring us. If I could see that this parcel was going to prevent us from doing something later on, if we didn't own it, that might be different. I don't see this being as critical as a land assembly because the other half of that block is, is not really in play at this point for us to do anything. Um, that's, that's where I stand on this one, and I respect everybody and how they vote. Um, I just, if it were my money, I would not spend it on this. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? 
Council Member Happel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first of all, I compliment very much our planning staff for doing exactly what they're paid to do, which is to look ahead and follow through with our uh, long-range plans for things. Uh, Jason, I was able to spend quite a bit of time with Andrea this morning, and she, she did a heck of a nice job giving me all the background and so forth, so I appreciate her taking, it, it was an unannounced appointment, but she did everything, so I, I appreciate that. Uh, I share the, some of the concerns that Councilmember Olson has with respect to the expenditure of funds. I know at our last at Finance and Personnel Committee meeting, Councilmember Kalo, I think it's your district, referenced the, <coughs> uh, and believe it or not, I don't, I don't object to taking risk either. I'm a little careful of taking risk with my money and even more careful of taking risk with other people's money. So that's why I'm trying to be a little careful with, with what we're doing here. Uh, the uh, comments made by the planning director and finance director definitely soften the financial impact. If I understand what was being said here is that we're, and you can interrupt me as long as the mayor doesn't, doesn't shut me off here, uh, that we've got, what, about 300, 390,000 available in that particular, is it TIF 17? Do we, is, that, is that available for use on this? That's what it, it will have in the future to make the first prepayment. That, that would be available before we have to start taking a loan out or how does, no, how does it? No, no. That would be available to uh, prepay on the principal balance um, around the time of the, or before the first payment is due. And the mayor, mayor is keeping letting me go back and forth here. So, so if, if we take, if we do that, then could, could you repeat again what ultimately the interest cost to the taxpayer would be? Um, the interest cost for uh, just to make all the payments as scheduled on a five-year loan are um, 57000 or 55500 And then if we were to make a $400,000 early principal payment um, in March of 2021 when the first payment would normally be due, that changes the interest to 38300 So that would result in an interest savings of 17146 Thank you. Uh, thank you. That, that's, that's helpful. Uh, the, the concern I'm still struggling with just a bit here is if I understand Jason, if the mayor allows me to ask you questions, uh, in, in your original memo dated September 27th, uh, point number five, and I think you were addressing this this evening as well, said there had been multiple bids on this from people in, in the same area? That, that's what we were told by the brokers involved. Yeah. And we, we understand that, in fact, very recently in talking with uh, Kathy Fox from Coldwell Banker that if the council decides not to pursue this, there are three other offers waiting to buy the property. I don't know what their intentions are. I think that's sort of an ethical thing with the brokers, they have to keep some of that in confidence, but uh, but we we've under that's what we understand in talking to the brokers. Understandable, thank you. Uh, that that's kind of gets into the, what I'm really struggling with here, is uh, the city purchasing and and I, I really don't object to the city purchasing property. I you know, Mayor, I've talked with you about times that's way we can deal with our boundaries around uh, the areas and so forth. We can purchase properties when they become available. But uh, somebody must be out there interested in purchasing this property. I don't know if it's 600,000, but it's something. And, and we wouldn't be spending it now. Our concern is, and you address this, and it's a legitimate concern, what are they gonna use it for? But every month, there's lots of properties that become available in the city and we usually don't buy them because we're concerned that someone's gonna turn it into this, this, that, or something else. And if someone does try to turn something into something that we don't care for, and it may not be totally applicable here, but we, we do have zoning laws and ordinances and everything else where we can essentially enforce what, what's going on <laughs> without ourselves purchasing. You know, I don't know if we're about to buy Kmart or Shopko, but at some point, 
there's only so much the city can purchase. And, that, and, that, and that's, and, and so as I said, you people are doing a heck of a job, really a heck of a job. And you're doing exactly what you're paid for, to look ahead. But that, that's, that's really where, I, where I'm running into a concern with this. So, someone else probably is ready to buy it. If we don't approve this this evening, I think our offer runs out tomorrow or something and someone else could buy it, or if someone else doesn't buy it, I presume that we could probably put another offer in. And, and in many ways, this is a case where I think process for all good intentions is kind of messed up. The mayor got hammered too, probably somewhat unfairly at the last meeting about short-circuiting things, and, and there's not a whole lot you can do when time, time frames get in there. But the other thing I've been sort of wondering about, and it, again, the horse is out of the barn, but it, it's, we, we are almost, uh, Mr. Attorney, talking on negotiations here, which might possibly be a closed session topic, but already we've acknowledged that the city's willing to pay $600,000. You know, maybe if the process would have been a little without the timeline, we could have had some discussions and said, oh, it's worth 551000 I don't know. So the process has kind of convoluted everything that's here. So. I, I, anyway, I think I've made my comments and I appreciate Mr. Mary letting people answer me. Thank you. Next up, Council Member Richmond. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the question I have is for Valerie. Um, what is the debt payment on the ramp, ramp excuse me, TID 17? I don't have that number right in front of me, but I believe it's around a million and 74,000 annually. Um, and I think we've made either one or two payments and that's a 20 year loan. Or bonds that we issued for that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, looking at all the numbers, you know, if I use the 55, 602,000 and add the 50 for demolition and a few other things thrown in, um, you know, where I, I think we're up to probably 769,000, um, give or take, but I definitely can't support this. Um, there are so many things that are needed in our in our community. Um, and if this, you know, if we could turn this down and then revisit it at a later time, but we really have no plan. You know, the discussion was it could be a public market and then it could be Explore La Crosse. And I did speak with AJ Farrells and they have no intention of going into that area. Um, but I think, you know, if we had a plan, if we had some ideas that were real concrete, maybe but right now it's the price of 700 plus thousand is just way too much at this time so thank you thank you next council member ostrom uh thank you mayor um so i serve as andrea knows i've served on the community development committee and um as the years have gone by and uh, we have both seen that property acquisition becomes more and more expensive with each passing year. Um, we have dealt with in PPH, and this is not directly related, but we, we had the Abraham Zahn building and tennis courts that were owned by the city, and we we're turning that into a 48-unit development. And we had the vision to move ahead and acquire that property and f and find somebody to develop it for us. And it's going to uh, result in approximately seven and a half million dollars in uh, assessment. So we need to take the chances when we have the opportunity because they aren't going to come back. You know, if somebody else buys this property, it could be another 20 years before we have another shot at it. They could let it sit for 10 years and do basically nothing. So unless they violate some of our codes, there's not a thing we can do about it. So, uh, and I don't know about you all, but I haven't any great fondness for billboards, so I'm be more than happy to see that go bye-bye. But I, I understand that there's a risk involved in this, and sometimes we have to take chances we have to look into the future. 
And this is one of those chances that we have an opportunity to do just that. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Anyone else wishing to speak on this item? I see no other request to speak. The motion on the floor is to adopt. Please go ahead and cast your vote. The motion passes by a vote of eight to five. The five no votes were Council Members Richmond, Newmeister, Olson, Gall, and Happel. So that motion carries, that item is adopted. We move on to item number 19-1414, an ordinance to amend subsection 115-110 of the Code of Ordinances of the City of La Crosse transferring certain property from the traditional neighborhood district general to the traditional neighborhood district specific allowing for mixed-use development at 1305 7th Street South. The vote out of the Special Judiciary and Administration Committee meeting was unani uh, a uni unanimous vote to adopt per the uh, uh, Plan Commission's recommendations, which had uh, several conditions on there, as well as the uh, requirement that the developer work out a revised lease with Gunderson on the 11 parking spaces. So we have a motion made by Councilmember Richmond, seconded by Councilmember Weaver to adopt. Any discussion on that? I see no request to speak. Please go ahead and cast your vote. Again, the motion is to adopt. Motion carries 13 to zero. That item is adopted. Uh, next item is 19-1513, a resolution authorizing installation of additional neighborhood safety lighting at the mid-block crosswalk in the 900 block of Jackson Street, Highway 33, and appropriation of funds. The vote out of the Special Finance and Personnel Committee meeting was a unanimous vote to support. And I see a motion has been made by Councilmember Neumeister, seconded by Council, uh, Council President Gall to adopt. Any discussion? I see no request to speak. Please go ahead and cast your vote again. The motion is to adopt. The vote is 13 to zero in favor. That resolution is adopted. Next item, 19-1520, a resolution authorizing the Safe Routes to Schools Steering Committee to select a consulting firm and enter into a professional services agreement for the preparation of a safe routes to school plan update for the city of La Crosse. The uh, action at the special finance and personnel committee meeting today was a unanimous vote in support. A motion has been made by council president Gall, seconded by council member Christians to adopt. And I would recognize council member Slesnico to speak. Thank you, mayor. Um, as the mayor said, it was unanimous, unanimously approved through F and P. I did want to thank those supporting this. Um, I'm on the Safe um, Routes to School Steering Committee. It's a really vibrant group of people on the committee really working to try to improve um, routes, both walking and biking to schools. We have a, a group, the tool group design group that um, has been selected through uh, proposals and interviews. Um, that looks like they'll do a very good job, but in a very tight time frame. And the reason for this resolution is to allow uh, approval through the committee um, uh, without having to go additionally through council as the original resolution so we can approve it this evening rather than waiting for November. So I appreciate your um, approval for the resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? I see no other requests to speak. The motion on the floor is to adopt. Please go ahead and cast your vote. The vote is 13 to zero in favor. That resolution is adopted. We move on now to items recommended to be adopted. Item up first is 19-1320, a resolution approving application of Gary Harder for a conditional use permit allowing demolition of structure for green space at 1133 Liberty Street. The vote out of the Judiciary and Administration Committee meeting was four to one in favor. And just as a note, the pilot agreement has been signed. 
I see a motion has been made by Council Member Weaver, seconded by Council Member Richmond to adopt, and I would recognize Council Member Kahlo to speak. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this went through City Plan Commission, and the vote was 3-3, three, three. Um, so it was not recommended for adoption. Um, the JNA vote was 4-1. to one. I did vote against it. Um, what, what I wanted to explain to the Council, the reason um, for my vote against it, is that I think I've seen an alarming trend um, that people come and ask to tear down structures to only have them replaced with green space. And I'm not opposed to demolition, but what I'd like to see is redevelopment of those sites. This is a single family home site on the north side. It's not in the floodway. I would like to see increased value economically by a single family home being put on that site. So the only reason I objected was I really would like on both of these issues to have a new single family home that adds value to the neighborhoods. And, and that's the only reason. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, I would recognize next council member Neumeister. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I agree with you. I, I, I would like to, and I even said it during the, the uh, JNA meeting as well, I'm sorry, to the, the planning commission meeting. However, this is, is a little different. Um, this area is being donated and it's being donated to the school that is adjacent to it. I think it's a great opportunity for the children that go to the school. And this isn't, to me, of the norm. There's, you see pictures of the property. It definitely needs to be demolished. He, could he put a new structure there? Absolutely, I'm sure he could. But this, this is an opportunity for the children to enhance their um, playing. There, there's their school that's located there. And really, the neighborhood uses that as a whole. So I really, I really am in favor of the demolition of this home for the donation purpose only. Um, and the fact that he's being given the pilot program it just is a bigger, just as big as incentive to me because they are going to be paying the taxes on it. So I, I hope that we move forward with this and grant them the ability to uh, demolish this home that is structurally unsafe and being broken into daily and it's just atrocious. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak on this item? Uh, Council Member Richmond. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I commend Mr. Harder for even taking this on. Um, it's a lot of extra um, costs added to it, but um, what was brought up at the JNA meeting was the importance of if this is going forward, he is willing to donate naturally to the school, but also purchase some equipment for playground equipment. And if anybody has been by that site, um, you have to go quite a ways to get to a park to play. The kids have no place to go. So other than crossing Copeland Avenue to go to Copeland Park or Goose Green. So I think this is important and I appreciate Mr. Harder taking this on. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? I see no other requests to speak on the board. The motion on the floor is to adopt. Please go ahead and cast your vote. The motion passes by a vote of 12 to 1. The one no vote was Council Member Kahlo. So that motion and res resolution and conditional use permit are adopted. We move on to our next item, which is item 19-1353, a resolution approving application of John and Joyce Deal for a conditional use permit allowing demolition of structure for green space at 1908 30th Street South. The vote from the Judiciary and Administration Committee was four to one in favor. I see a motion has been made by Council Member Podeski, seconded by Council Member Christians to adopt, and I would recognize Council Member Podeski to speak. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'm only going to speak for a second. I do know John and Joyce. They're my old landlords. Uh, I, and I believe what they want to do is down the road, and I believe there's also, they're going to uh, have agreed to the pilot, and down the road they want to build an age-friendly house. I am going to quit talking so their council rep can talk. I see he's up. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up, Council Member Happel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is a... Uh, 
I don't know how I even describe this place. It's, it's in a really nice neighborhood about a block from Schmidty's, and somehow there's this uh, stucco house built in about 1920 or 1930, which at best is half the size of this room. And for some years it was used as a rental. The last rental person uh, was not really good and uh, all the water pipes broke and so forth. I've actually taken the time with uh, having John escort me and walk through that, uh, that place and uh, it's a mess. It, uh, it, it, it is totally an eyesore in what is a very nice neighborhood. And by tearing this thing, uh, how do I describe it? Uh, there's a brand new duplex right next to it. There's a very renovated house right next to it. There's houses probably no more than 25 years old across the street from it. And there's a brand new garage right behind it. Uh, but this thing is sitting right there. And uh, you wonder who put that in the middle of somebody's yard, but it's, it's been there for probably 80 years. And I'm surprised that the deals have waited this long to ask about tearing it down. Uh, that neighborhood is going to look much better when this thing is removed. I know John has talked to me about possibly some future development there, but whether he does something or not in the future, this neighborhood is going to look better when you take that thing out of there. And they're paying for it, not the city. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Anyone else? I see no other requests. The motion on the floor to, is to adopt. Please cast your vote. The motion passes by a vote of 13 to zero. The resolution and conditional use permit are approved. We are on to the consent agenda. If you have an item that you would like held out and voted on separately, please hit your request to speak button and I will recognize you. Uh, first up is Council Member Jansen. Thank you, Mayor. I would like to um, pull out 19-1354. Okay, that item has been re-referred. What would you like to do? I'd like to uh, move that we um, uh, approve that uh, ordinance change. Uh, the resident had requested a referral because he was having finance um, discussions with his bank, but everything got worked out. So he's requested that we vote on this. And um, I understand that there wasn't a public discussion at JNA but in reality, no one showed up to have a discussion. And um, I received um, only one phone call and that was regarding parking. And um, that's a separate issue regarding the, after the ordinance change is made um, and the owner is willing to work on that, that situation. So I would ask that um, everyone support this. So we need to get a motion on the floor then if you're gonna to move to adopt this. I move to adopt it, yes. Okay. There's a motion by Council Member Jansen to adopt. Is there a second? Second. Uh, I heard a second by Council Member Neumeister. And again, this is uh, uh, the rezoning on 1033 Caledonia Street. Any discussion on that? Council Member Neumeister, did you want to speak on that? No, sir. Okay. Anyone else wishing to speak on this item? Uh, Council President Gall, go ahead. So... I just want to be clear. What, so we are looking at the item itself then at this point? And we're yes. Going to vote on the item itself. The, the motion on the floor would be to adopt this rezoning. Um, I could have, if, if you wouldn't mind, our planning director just give like a, a very brief summary for those that maybe didn't hear at the, at the plan commission and what the planning recommendation was on this item, if that, if that works. I, that would, I would appreciate that. I, I, I think... You know, whether or not we vote for this or against it, I guess would be here tonight. But I, I personally have a bit of a problem with the fact that we would be taking up this issue this evening without the benefit of uh, it following a normal procedure going through the committee for approval uh, because it really wasn't considered at all. And uh, I, I, I personally think this isn't the best idea. Okay, thank you. I would ask uh, Jason Gilman if he could provide just a very brief review while he's gathering his notes on the uh, staff recommendation for this particular request.
Thank you, Your Honor. The, um, the recommendation out of the Planning Commission of uh, September 30th was uh, to refer this item uh, because of the uh, request of the owner. Uh, but in looking at the uh, staff uh, recommendation, we did recommend this for approval, uh, just noting that uh, significant work was going to be done to the exterior of the building and that uh, the parking was acknowledged uh, and the applicant will have to provide nine off-street parking spaces for seven for seven bedrooms. Uh, currently the applicant had five surface pa spaces and a detached garage but it was unclear if it could be used for parking so they were to rectify that issue to make sure they had uh, the required nine and then uh, they also may need to apply for a variance from the Board of Zoning Appeals if they were unable to uh, uh, provide the off-street parking. Um, so based on the uh, increasing the size of the building and reducing the total number of units in the building um, and the fact that the zoning was consistent with the comprehensive plan, planning department did recommend approval. Uh, but the, again, the planning commission at the request of the owner referred it. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. Uh, I would uh, recognize next Council Member Kalo. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I would concur that I'm a little uncomfortable making a decision without public hearing. Um, and we really didn't discuss it at great length at Plan Commission because he asked to have it referred. I, I still might vote, have voted to allow him to do this, but I guess we didn't really have the chance to ask a lot of questions. So um, I'm a little uncomfortable with this. Well, j just as a reminder, if there is still a, a comfort level as far as whether to vote this uh, and to go forward with the motion to adopt, um, a motion to refer would, would uh, supersede that. And if there's the seven votes to refer, that would be referred. I mean, so that, that is a, a possible path. But right now the motion on the floor is to adopt. Any other discussion? I see no other requests to speak. The motion on the floor is to adopt. Please go ahead and cast your vote. The motion passes by a vote of seven to six. The six no votes were Council Members Slesnico, Weaver, Kalo, Ostrom, Mettinger, and Gall. So that motion does pass by a vote of seven to six and that ordinance is approved. I'll go back to the start of the consent. Anyone have an item that they want held out, please hit your button and I would recognize Council President Gall. Thank you. Um, I wanna hold out 19-1113, please. Thank you. Do we wanna get a, a motion on the floor here? I'm gonna make a motion to adopt and then okay. I have an amendment. So I have a motion by Council Member or Council President Gall to adopt, seconded by Council Member Podeski to, uh, uh, or seconded by Council Member Podeski, and then I know Council President Gall, you have an amendment which is on Legistar relating to uh, decrease of all of the fees as originally proposed. That yeah. Did you want to speak on that? Yes, I do. Go, go ahead. Yeah. Um, this has been, uh, gave a lot of consideration to this and worked with the mayor on the amendment that is up this evening. And to the mayor's credit, he had already done some of the work uh, that you see in this amendment this evening because he too realized that we were taking a pretty good swing at some of these things. Uh, the amendment that we have on the uh, legislature that I hope everybody got to take a look at uh, basically reduced all of the fees that were originally pre uh, uh, presented from anywhere between 17 and 30 percent with, a with the uh, larger number being more concentrated on the lower end of the spectrum. I think this is the, uh, the right way for us to go. I know that there's another one here is 19-1103 that I had considered taking out and I've talked to Nikki Folks need to realize that there, we know that there's a lot of time constraint issues that people think they may have with this, but Nikki's assured me that the city clerk intends to work with people this coming year uh, who, uh, because of the implementation of this schedule. So, I mean, they're kind of keeping an open mind on that, and if this is ever a problem in the future that uh, really does cause issues that can't be overcome, uh, we can always revisit this if we need to. But I'm going to leave that in, and I am going to move the amendment uh, that is posted the legislature. 
Thank you. I, I do do recognize that there is a motion to amend made by Council President Gall, seconded by Council Member Richmond. Uh, to speak on that, I would recognize Council Member Podesta. Thank you, Your Honor. Before we vote, and I know it's not the norm, but I would like, uh, there are some people here who weren't available last week, and I would like to make a motion to have a quick public hearing on this, if we could. Is there a second? So I heard a motion made by Council Member Podesky, seconded by Council Member Jansen for a public hearing. Any discussion on that? I'll just give the clerk a chance here to get that up on the board. Okay, so we're up on the board. Any discussion? Uh, Council Member Neumeister, did you want to speak on the public hearing? No. Okay. All right, so we have a motion to go to public hearing. Please go ahead and cast your vote. The motion carries by a vote of 11 to 2, so we are in public hearing. I would uh, just uh, note that we are in the public hearing per the council rules, which are uh, speakers are limited to three minutes, and we do have uh, for a total of 15 minutes per side, whether you're in favor or against, and then we do have three minutes for rebuttal time if we need to do that. So um, I would uh, uh, first recognize uh, Elaine Yeager, 620 22nd Street South, representing the North La Crosse Business Association and Rotary, uh, who wants to speak in opposition of the legislation. And, and those are the two folks that we have uh, registered here tonight. So go ahead, Elaine. Thank you, Mayor. Actually, I'm not, it's not that I'm in opposition of it. And thankfully, I had an opportunity to speak to a few folks prior to tonight's council meeting. It was more that I felt um, like I didn't completely understand the fee structure. And so I was a little concerned about the impact that would have on some of our bigger functions that we have in town, uh, Rotary Lights, um, Moon Tunes, uh, Oktoberfest, some of the things that, that are big and bring in a lot of tourism dollars to town. So I guess um, my concern was that um, and I apologize because I didn't actually have all of my data together before I got here, so I don't completely even now understand what the fee structure is going to look like. Um, so I had intended to come up and ask that you refer it for 30 days just to try and get people to get their arms wrapped around what that actually looked like. But again, I had some great conversation prior to this, and um, it seems like um, I want to thank all of you for, for the work that you've been doing on it. Uh, it seems like some of my questions were answered, so I will leave it in your capable hands. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up is Terry Bauer from 638 10th Avenue North on Alaska, Wisconsin, representing La Crosse Valley View Rotary, and he also wishes to speak in opposition to the legislation. You're not Terry Bauer. <laughs> um, we, is Terry we, I here? Think, I, is, is Terry, Terry had here? to leave. Okay. Am is I allowed there, to take Is there anyone place? else wishing to speak? Go ahead and just introduce yourself, please. Okay. I'm allowed to speak then. Dave Clements is my name. I'm retired. Um, I'm here representing uh, a number of organizations, uh, Moon Tunes, um, the Joe, it's just Joe Foundation, among other things. Um, adamantly opposed to raising fees. Um, First of all, for the Joe It's Just Show Foundation, we do a, c a couple of small fundraisers, make a couple of thousand dollars, and anything you do uh, to raise these fees will take money away from our suicide prevention work. And uh, for that purpose, I really think it's uh, wrong what you're doing. Uh, the other piece is, um, four years ago, $750,000 of room tax money was moved from the La Crosse Center and the Convention and Visitors Bureau and I was the director of the Convention of Visitors Bureau at the time. $750,000 annually has been moved from those two organizations into the city's general fund. And at the time, we were told publicly that the, that money would offset the cost for things like parades, events, festivals. Um, and that was why the money was being diverted from the La Crosse Center and the Convention of Visitors Bureau and that those fees would now go away or be greatly reduced. 
Now, none of that has happened. In fact, you're going the opposite way. Oktoberfest still pays thirty to forty thousand dollars a year for just putting on a parade that they make not a penny off of, and yet the city continues to take the seven hundred fifty thousand dollars a year to to pay for all these things, and you're raising fees. I mean, you, we were lied to. Okay, we were flatly lied to, and now you're going to raise the fees. I think it's wrong. I think if you have any integrity, you will vote this down. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak, please come forward and introduce yourself. Um, I'm Tammy Plord from Pearl Street Brewery, 1401 St. Andrew Street, La Crosse, Wisconsin. Um, I was a little late to the game, but I did email each of you. Um, I just have a couple concerns with raising the fee, uh, especially just because a large portion of people that apply for the liquor license portion are really, really small organizations, and that fee used to be $10. And as it was explained to me, and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, that $10 fee is designated at capped by the state of Wisconsin for the liquor license. So if you add a $35, or it was 50 now maybe amended to $35, you are almost more than four times what people have been paying for that permit. Um, and going from ten dollars to forty five dollars is is a lot if if you're a really small you're going to have a very small event and you know every dollar is going to matter and I guess I have concern because I was it was explained to me that out of all the people that apply for these permits about 75 percent of these people are applying only for that ten dollar license and so they really don't have any other permit needs so and those people are nonprofit organizations obviously raising money, so every dollar is going to count. Um, I don't have a lot of skin in this game. I get a lot of calls from people that want to do this, and I do commend the city clerk's office for helping to grow this, and a lot of people are really excited to be able to apply and have um, alcohol beverages at their events, and um, that's a large portion of those people applying for those permits, and I would really hate to deter them from wanting to do these events because of the increase in fees and, and the time structure, and I, and I do appreciate the, uh, the clerk's office being willing to be flexible in that first year as people are getting um, used to the different timeline structure uh, because if they were gonna get double those fees, then you're talking about $80, and if you're only gonna raise a couple hundred bucks, $80 is gonna be critical, and those people are gonna be deterred heard from doing those events so um, community is a big mission for me and, and and I love that people are able to do this and I really want them to be encouraged to continue to do this and I would really hate for this to be a deterrent so thank you for your time thank you anyone else wishing to speak on this item anyone else wishing to speak anyone else okay I would entertain a motion to close the public hearing I heard a motion by Council President Gall, seconded by Council Member Olson, to close the public hearing. Go ahead and cast your vote, please. The, uh, the motion passes by a vote of 12 to 1. So we have, uh, we are, uh, the public hearing has is, is been closed. We're back to the amendment, which is in Legistar, uh, which includes the reduction of the fees. Uh, I would recognize Council Member Neumeister to speak on that. Uh, thank you. Uh, obviously, everyone knows where I stand on this. I haven't been in favor of it. I tried to um, get a 30-day referral from the FMP, I, I appreciate all the work that's been done. And I think now more than ever, um, especially with the changes in fees, uh, the structure, I, I think that um, a 30 day referral is more important now. I don't think we're in such a all off hurry where this needs to be passed tonight. I think that now people really need to see the new structure, the new pay, what it would actually cost them. And there, I still get calls a lot of calls that people don't understand it. So I, thank you. I, I, I move to refer this for 30 days, please. 
Okay, so I heard a motion by Councilmember Neumeister to refer this item for 30 days and seconded by Councilmember Podeski. And so, uh, Councilmember Podeski, did you want to speak to the referral? No, thank you. Okay. I, I was just going to do that right. if, if Scott didn't. I, I would recognize Council President Gall to speak on the referral. I honestly think that the feedback that we've received on this, uh, I don't think that there's anything that's going to be achieved by the... Uh, by a 30-day referral. I think we have the information that we need in front of us here this evening. Uh, this has been part of a long process that the clerk's office has been involved in. It just didn't pop up on us. And uh, I believe that a 30-day referral is counterproductive, and I believe we should move forward on this this evening. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak on the referral? Councilmember Neumeister? Thank you. Not to start a big fight with the pros here, but I, I'm just bringing up that they may have worked on this for a long time and they've done an outstanding job. And I know that a lot of work is put in this, but it hasn't been a long time uh, for the, the people that this affects. Uh, a lot of them still don't understand it. They're confused by it. And I believe that we owe them the opportunity to fully understand it before we change this. I think we do a lot of this where we make changes, we don't give proper time, and we still have a lot of people questioning it. And, and I think a 30-day referral is the correct thing to do so they understand it. And, and if not, that's fine, but that's, that's where I'm going. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, I'd recognize Council Member Olson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I guess, uh, presuming that the 30-day referral is passed, I, I would like some investigation to what was mentioned about the transfer of $750,000 of, of room tax fund from um, the La Crosse Center and the LCCVB um, into the city coffers specifically to mitigate these types of, of expenses and fees and such. Um, I do believe that integrity is important and um, there are cases where the city in some point has made assurances that years later and several elections later and the turnover and the people who are, are charged with carrying out these, these promises that things can change. Um, and I would feel much better with a referral to sort out the facts of that and also to allow anybody affected, especially the smaller events that are, are, are going to be impacted relatively more simply because the, do, the raw dollar value for them is that much smaller, um, to be able to understand what the, what the new fee structure is gonna be. So I, I will support the referral, thank you. Next, I'd recognize Council Member Richmond. Thank you, Mayor. Um, at the JNA meeting um, last week, um, we heard from Mayor Cabot as well, and, and Nikki, you gave a great um, synopsis of the different groups that you had met with, and I actually was um, in the clerk's office a few times on that as well. But I think, Nikki, if you wouldn't mind um, just speaking on the different groups that you did speak with, and you know, there really wasn't a whole lot of opposition, if I'm correct. Thank you. I met with uh, Explore La Crosse on two different occasions. The first occasion was with the board members, and then the second occasion was with, no, excuse me, the, yeah, the first occasion was with the board, and the second occasion was with Explore La Crosse membership. Um, there were questions um, since, since those meetings. You know, a lot hasn't necessarily come to me um, as far as additional questions, so. Okay, other discussion on the referral? It'll be number three. Thank promises, you. promises. Thank okay, you, Okay, go Honor. ahead. Council I Member feel like Mike. Mr. Happel here. <laughs> I, I just, I want to bring up, I am a board member of, obviously, Explore La Crosse, as she had mentioned, and she did, she did a wonderful job, and, and she explained it to him, but there still is a lot of questions with the people that were in that board member. I do receive calls, and that is for one of my reasons for the 30-day referral. Thank you. Anyone else? Wishing to speak on the referral, Councilmember Jansen. I have voted um, at F and P to move this forward. At this point, um, I would like to have a referral as well. 
um, especially if there were some promises made. I would just like to get the facts out there before I make a final decision. Council Member Happel, go ahead. I would say people, and I, I don't usually talk three times for Mr. Student, but that's okay. Uh, the, uh, what, as you will on a referral, uh, we did meet our timelines and people had opportunity to speak and if, if they need more, that's fine. I do have to, as much as I respect Mr. Clements, I remember having a conversation when he called me back a few years ago when we uh, took additional money, I think it was the mayor's request out of the room fund and I remember my comment was those funds were going uh, to our general fund and I expect a lot of it would go for police and fire protection. I don't remember anything about being for fees. So let's, let's not drift into something that's got little to nothing to do with fees. We, either the fees should be increased or not increased, but let's not drift into something that is completely unrelated. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Anyone else? Motion on the floor is to refer for 30 days. Please go ahead and cast your vote. Motion passes by a vote of nine to four. The four no votes were Council Members Weaver, Ostrom, Gall, and Happel. So that is referred for 30 days. Uh, we go back to the big board. And would anyone else, uh, does anyone else have an item that they would like held out to vote on separately? Anyone else? How about a motion then? Okay, so there's a motion by Christian, seconded by Richmond to adopt the rest of the consent agenda. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Any opposed say no. Motion carries and then I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I heard a motion by Council Member Weaver, seconded by Council Member Podesky to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you all and have a great rest of your night.